Hello and welcome to Liberation Books, a YouTube channel where I talk about books that will help you awaken spiritually. I thought that the new man would be a good place to start. Why? Because basically we are at a turning point in history. Something is awakening deep within many of us right now. Something that is more true and real than the little mindless, self-serving, pleasure-seeking, mechanical self that for so long has dominated so many of us. This is basically what the new man is about. Autopilot is a good metaphor for the false self and its behavior. Because we only need to take a step back and truly observe ourselves throughout one day, to see how much of our behavior is automatic, rather than based on conscious choices. When we start seeing this in ourselves and decide that it's worthwhile to do something about it, a difficult journey begins. Because as soon as we lose focus, we're back in autopilot mode. And this focus and clarity may only last for a couple of seconds at a time in the beginning. So, who is Maurice Nichol? Nichol was a British psychiatrist and psychoanalyst, who was a student of Gurdjieff, who was a spiritual teacher, mystic, esotericist and philosopher. Nichol wrote several books on Gurdjieff's teachings. His writings focus on the inner work of self-development and the integration of one's physical, emotional, and mental aspects in order to achieve spiritual growth. He also emphasized the importance of self-observation and the use of remembering oneself as a means of achieving self-awareness. The new man begins as follows, all sacred writings contain an outer and an inner meaning. This inner meaning is psychological according to Nicol. And while I'm not completely sure about all of Nichols' interpretations of the inner meanings, that there are such meanings coincides with my own experiences. To be clear, when we move into the field of the esoteric, there is no more room for subjective interpretation than within the exoteric. In fact even less so. Because all truth within the esoteric can be confirmed through experience. That which has not been confirmed through experience must not be taken as absolute truth. Here I would like to interject two things, to avoid the criticism of elitism, which is something that I detest. The first is that this is not about some esoteric knowledge reserved for a small elite, but something that is there to see for anyone that can see it. The second is that I believe that it is wrong to value the esoteric over the exoteric, or in other words the inner over the outer. My experiences tell me that such a viewpoint only leads to ego inflation. I rather believe that the outer is a prerequisite of the inner. That unless we are prepared to make the kinds of sacrifices that the exoteric religion requires of us, we will get very little results within the esoteric. And at the core, we are all beloved children of God, equally valuable in the eyes of the Lord, no matter where on our journey we are. So when we scoff at someone that we perceive as being on a lower level than ourselves, we are really saying more about ourselves than about the person that we look down on. I also want to be very clear that what I'm talking about does not in any way go against the core tenets of the Bible. As far as I'm concerned, I'm in agreement with those things that most theologians agree upon. And as far as I'm concerned, nothing that I talk about here contradicts that. It only elaborates on it. I still believe that we need Jesus for our salvation, to carry us when we are too weak to stand on our own. And I absolutely believe that we need the guidance of the Holy Spirit. As I understand it, the exoteric refers to what is collective. To the narrative that we are all part of, that is centered around Jesus Christ and what He did for us through His death and resurrection. This is something that we only have to say yes to. Say yes and live out that yes to the best of our ability in our day-to-day -day lives. The esoteric, while in one sense being the same for everyone, relates to our individual journey our personal relationship with God and our personal, inner transformation. It's about finding that which is authentic and true within ourselves. Our real I. According to Nicol, all of that which is hidden within biblical scripture, point to this new person that is ready to be born within ourselves, and the characteristics of this new person. A basic premise to keep in mind here, is something that every author knows, that there is a limit to what can be conveyed directly through text. So it makes sense that God, the master storyteller, would weave in different layers of meaning into his story. One of the most clear examples of what Nickel is talking about, is when Jesus turns water into wine, which, according to Nickel, points to this inner transformation. Other examples is the blind man that Jesus heals. 
In the exoteric this of course shows Jesus' power to heal the sick, as well as God's overall plan for humanity. But going from blind to seeing is also a symbol of becoming acquainted with a deeper truth. Or we can take the concept of rebirth itself, which according to Nicol refers to an evolution into a higher state of being. Not higher in the sense of better, but higher in the sense of distinctly different. Liberated. Concepts such as better are not appropriate here, as we should refrain from these types of value judgments. The Pharisees are another interesting example. Because they so clearly stand for the outward observance of rules and an outward display of goodness and righteousness, while they are completely dried up on the inside. In this context it can be interesting to ask yourself in which parts of your life you are more concerned with appearances than with what actually is. I know I've found many and continue to find more all the time. I've even discovered the twisted tendency, to unconsciously believe that I will somehow make something about myself a reality, just by making others believe it to be so. These are just a few examples. You may question these interpretations. I believe what Nicol is pointing to it then. And I believe it because I've started to see it in myself and my own life. Mainly I've started to see just how automatic a lot of my behavior is, and that there is the potential of liberation from this type of behavior within myself. After the initial remark, Nicol asks rhetorically, why not say directly what is meant? To understand the answer to this question, we need to understand something about words, thoughts, and their limitations. Some things simply cannot be grasped by the intellect alone, and the intellect can often rather stand in the way of understanding. Furthermore, depending on one's current level of understanding, one may not at all be able to grasp certain truths on an intellectual level. But, according to Nicol, by understanding the literal meaning of a text, we also absorb some of its hidden meaning. In this case we need ordinary knowledge as a starting point. Nickel goes so far as to say that a man is his understanding. I want you to think about this for a bit. Because what does it mean to have understanding? How do we understand ourselves, the world and our relationship with the world? How do we understand religion and religious scripture? This is what we will be exploring here, taking the concept of rebirth as a starting point. It's important to understand that this definitely has to do with morals, but not in the ordinary sense. It's not about morals for their own, or even for God's sake. But if we want to become born again, there are things that we need to let go of. At the core, the shift we need to make is from living primarily for ourselves, to living for something greater. For a higher ideal, for humanity, and for God. This is also how we need to view the law of the Old Testament and what Jesus meant, when he said that he did not come to abolish the law of the prophets, but to fulfill it. You see, alluding to what I said in the beginning, the completely lawless person is, while on the surface seeming most free, in reality the most enslaved. This is because he is completely ruled by his instincts, passions, and how they respond to the circumstances that he is currently in. So the law is actually liberating, as it gives him something higher than his animal nature to guide his actions. This is something to think about, when snakes hiss about how we should let ourselves go and do what we feel like. But the law can only take a person so far. The law is the outer observance of rules, in order to escape the tyranny of our lower nature. It cannot create the necessary change on the inside. The law is concerned with actions and appearances, while rebirth is concerned with what a person actually is on the inside. This is the next step. To instead focus on what inner state and attitude one is acting from. If our inside is right, the right actions will follow. In this context, two of the first things that we need to start working on, is self-observation. And second to let go of caring about other people's opinions. Self-observation I will get into in more detail in another video. But basically it's about bringing awareness into our thoughts, words and actions throughout the day. While doing this we must, to the best of our ability, try to refrain from judging ourselves, as this is counterproductive. It's counterproductive because self-condemnation makes us want to hide things from ourselves. Instead, what we need to do, is to make a firm commitment to letting all that is unwanted fall away. Then, when we discover automatic behavioral patterns in ourselves, we need to start breaking those to the best of our ability. 
When it comes to caring about what other people think of us, this is the antithesis to what we are trying to accomplish. We want to change our insides and not our outward appearances. And we want to do this because it's right. Because we want to be authentic and liberated. Not because we want to appear that way. Often appearances have very little to do with truth. And what matters is only our actual inner state. Not what someone else thinks that it is. With this, I believe that I've given you the basics of the concept of rebirth, as it is understood by Maurice Nichol. Before I end the video, I wish to conclude with the following, it is my firm belief that this is where we need to begin if we wish to solve the world's problems. Not with more political solutions, but for each and every one of us to change our insights. And while doing so, also help others to see that they need to do the same. Those of us that go through the journey of rebirth, also need to share our knowledge about it. This is how we on an individual level can live authentic, happy, free, and meaningful lives. And such individuals will naturally contribute to creating a better world, without the need for coercion from unelected tyrants. This is, ultimately, how we become individuals that freely surrender to God's will. To do this not out of fear or mindless duty, but because of our understanding that it's right and why. We understand this because we have become individuals capable of this level of understanding. Because we have been reborn. I also want to mention that in future videos, I will go through some basics that will help living in the world but not of it, as we struggle to break free from that which binds us. These will not be strictly fourth-way teachings, but everything from correct breathing, to correct posture to what the inner body is and how to get in contact with it. I hope to see you then. Thank you for your time. If you want to read more about my journey, my discoveries along the way and the observations that I've made about the world, spirituality, Christianity and the human condition, please visit my blog. If you want to support my channel, you are welcome to buy an item from one of my shops. You will find links to all of this in the comment section and in the description.